Hello everybody, this is Joe, and as you can see by the title of this, I am going to try to convey to you the proper meaning of the word. Christianity has a slightly skewed idea what it is, and hopefully this will correct it. I'm sitting here on purpose at work in front of this plaque in back of me because some of our traditions that we've picked up in Christianity are not based in correctness. And our faith in Messiah will be strengthened when some of those things are corrected. And this is a, a teaching that will hopefully correct what is really meant by the word in Scripture. So here goes. First off, I want to intimidate you by putting up some Hebrew. Not really. Uh, this is Genesis 1-1. Remember that Hebrew reads from right to left. And that's Bereshit, Bera, Elohim, Et, Hashemayim, Vayet, Haaretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Notice the word in green. This is a graph that shows the entire Hebrew alphabet. And if you look at it, remember again that Hebrew reads from right to left. The top right is the first letter, the Aleph. And the bottom left is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Tav which is that word in Hebrew. Now we've gone back to the Hebrew here. Uh, I'm going to take you through it slowly. Go up to the top right, and that first word there, Bereshit, that is the word that is translated in the beginning. The next word after that, Bera is the word that's translated created. The next word down is Elohim, which is the word that is translated God. I'm going to skip the word in the green and go to the next word on the bottom right, and that's Hashemayim, which is the heavens. The next word the word vayet means and, that's translated and, and then that last word there on the bottom left is haaretz, which is the earth. So leaving out that little word there, we have in the beginning created God, the heavens, and the earth. which is the complete translation, English translation, of Genesis 1.1. And that little word there with the first and last Hebrew letter is not translated, and it is not translated in Hebrew either. And the sages have always wondered who or what is that little word there. It doesn't mean anything. But when Messiah came and revealed to John in Revelation that he was the Alpha and the Omega, he solved a big Hebrew mystery. Let's think this out logically. Yeshua, the Messiah, came to John at the bidding of his father on the Isle of Patmos to give him the revelation. Uh, Yeshua was a descendant of David, who was a descendant of Judah. You couldn't get any more Jewish than uh, Messiah. And John, his disciple, while the New Testament does not give his lineage, was obviously a Jew, or at least a Hebrew. So his Messiah obviously spoke Hebrew, and John spoke Hebrew. So let me ask you a question. 
Yeshua comes to his servant and prophet John on the Isle of Patmos, and he speaks to him in Greek. No. Messiah, when he came to John on the Isle of Patmos, spoke Hebrew. And what he spoke initially, identifying himself, go to the book of Revelation, he identified himself as the Aleph and the Tav. I am that word, which solved the whole, like I said, a whole Hebrew mystery. They didn't, the Jews and the Hebrews did not know who, you know, who this word was. And that word shows up in some very strange places. It isn't just in Genesis 1-1 it shows up. And one of the places where it shows up is what Yeshua said to his servant John about they will look upon him whom they have pierced. He identifies himself as that. And that translation is incorrect. Because that little word there, that Aleph and Tav, is the word that's translated him, but that isn't the correct translation of it. It's that Aleph and Tav, that word that nobody knows what it is. It actually says in Zechariah, they will look upon Aleph Tav, they pierced. And in Revelation, where Yeshua is identifying himself again as that individual, the Aleph and Tav is Messiah. Now Christians say and they believe that Yeshua is the Word of God, but they really don't know what they're saying. Because this little mystery is only found in Hebrew, and they don't quite have the, the correct understanding of what the word means. Okay, here is the instance in Zechariah where the Aleph Tav appears again. Again, I have the Aleph Tav highlighted in green there. And I made a mistake in the clip just before this. Uh, I said it was translated him, but it's actually translated me in most of the Bibles, and uh, you'll see it coming out. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of favor and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. They translated the Aleph Tav from the original Hebrew as me there, when actually it should be, it isn't me. It's Aleph Tav, the word, and here is the correct translation. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of favor and of supplications and they shall look upon Aleph Tav, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And she will be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. That's another instance where the Aleph Tav appears. And the Hebrews and the Jews don't know uh, what's going on. Here is another very significant instance where the Aleph Tav appears. It's Genesis 37:14, where Joseph, a type of the Messiah, is sent by his father to check on the welfare of the brethren and of the flocks. And it's the highlighted word there, the two-letter word Aleph Tav. And in most translations, it's either just translated the flocks or his father's flocks, referring to Jacob. But actually, with the Aleph Tav there, they, translators don't know what to do with that because, I, like I said, that word actually doesn't mean anything. And they don't know what to do with it, so they stick in father or the. But actually, in this next slide, you'll see how it should be translated. 
and it is, like I said, the start of the story of redemption. And he, Jacob, said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with Aleph Tav's flocks. Now remember when Yeshua said he only did what the Father told him to do, and he only said what he, he heard the Father say? The flocks actually belonged to the Father, and Yeshua came to check on them, us. As you can see, I have changed locales for this next little clip. Uh, I'm just going to show you how Yeshua in Revelation identified himself as the Elephant Tav, and then there'll be the conclusion of the video. I hope this is informative, and I hope uh, I can get a little more professional in my presentation. So I hope you enjoy it and shalom. So here are three corrected translations from Revelation that are a little more accurate. Where Yeshua himself is identifying himself as that word that is found in Genesis 1.1. Remember that the Aleph and the Tav are the first and the last letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So he is definitely identifying himself as that mysterious word that even the Hebrews didn't know what it meant in the very beginning, in the very first verse of Genesis. Now, once again, here is the Hebrew first verse in Genesis. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim vayet ha'aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the green there is the Aleph and the Tav. It is not translated even in Hebrew. But John in uh, his gospel, in the first verse, says, in the beginning, was the word. So remember again that Hebrew reads from right to left. Go up to that first word in the top right and you count in the third letter is the Aleph and the sixth letter is the Tav. So John was just doing a teaching from Genesis 1-1 from the Torah in the beginning was the word. That Aleph and Tav is in the word in the beginning. And what does John say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him. He is the creator. And if you look at the next word, Elohim, in the next line, and et, the Aleph Tav, remember that Hebrew reads from right to left. So actually, if they're facing you, the Aleph Tav is on the right hand of Elohim. So that teaching that Yeshua sits at the right hand of God is actually found in the first verse of Genesis. So I am going to conclude this right now. I'm going to work on this some more, take the rough edges off, but uh, hopefully this video has informed you exactly who the word is, what the word actually means. It was a mystery to the Hebrews and Yeshua through his prophet John solve that mystery. Anytime you come across something in the Bible and you don't know what it's about, 
99.9% of the time, it's about the Messiah. So until I correct this video, make it a little smoother, over and ouch, shalom from Messiah Yeshua and our Father.